Prince Harry has been humiliated on German TV after he failed to score a single point in a football challenge and he was beaten by a pensioner. What do you think? <laughs> well, I'm not quite sure whether this question's against the pensioner or against Harry. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm assuming it's going to, going to be against Harry and I'm going to say the story's true. Yeah. Well, but, uh, do, you th do you think that Harry is ever going to make a comeback into the royal family? But why would he want to make a comeback into Britain's poshest dysfunctional family? Because she's worse. <laughs> yeah. She is worse. You set me up for that yeah. one yeah. nicely. Yeah, yeah, nice. Well done, pal. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. No, but uh, I suppose this is uh, probably obviously because it's the opening of the Invictus Games and he's been all over the media, hasn't he? Apparently he got a, a quite a lengthy standing ovation when he gave quite a good opening speech and all the rest of it. But I have to admit, he was out giving, uh, he was out selfies and all the rest of it with fans of his outside the stadium. I, cause you have to wonder whether they were planted fans. But yeah. um, <laughs> I was like, it was the happiest I've seen him look in a very long time. Do you know, he was back... He touched at... on, on something that he's good at. He did very, very well at Sandhurst. When he's in his, his element, He's good. Yeah, he he's was, happy. Yeah, yeah. He, he won that sword for being the top cadet. And, and the funny thing is, people have actually said it was genuine. You might have thought it was a little bit rigged. I mean, mm. I suppose. Well. But it, it's all changed since he was at Sanders, hasn't it? He's married Megan. He's become emasculated. Yeah. Uh, quite likely, I agree with you, Derek. He's, he's, he's probably been beat by the pensioner. I mean, so, um, <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so, Simon, um, have you got anything to contribute about what a man would do if he marries an egotistical, narcissistic? <laughs> <laughs> Come yeah. on, Simon. Well, I Come can on, give Simon. Him some really good advice. I, my my suggestion is the marriage will not last. That's. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm missing something here. You need to. You need my, to. My second marriage but... followed a similar trajectory Tree. to keep it. Oh, and okay. the third. <laughs> <laughs> the third has just got started. It's but, a great it's, start. But for viewers, start. you might not know, maybe some context. Uh, yeah, just uh, Google Mrs. Danchuk. <laughs> <laughs> okay. there, is, there is a whirlwind of information. Or the old Mrs. Danchuk. There's no, no one new one. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, <laughs> You've had say. enough. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, though, uh, Meghan Markle is coming to the Invictus Games, so is it? There was a big debate about whether she was actually going to show up, but I think she's coming to the, the closing ceremony. And the one thing I would say to Watch people... Watch his little package. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. One thing I, I would room. say to people, though, is... <laughs> Just, why don't we just ignore her this time? You know, this isn't this isn't about those two. This is the Invictus Games. It's about these rehabilitation stories. It's about the heroes that these people actually are. And why don't we just focus on them for a change rather than having to have this constant drama about Harry and Meghan, which just gets boring beyond belief. Is it true that uh, Prince Harry has really struggled in a football uh, competition in Germany? Is it true or is it false? I'm afraid it's true. It's absolutely true! <laughs> OK, animal rights campaigners at PETA have said cow's milk uh, is a symbol of white supremacy, Lois. Is that true or is it false? Um, oh, my God, really? They actually said that? You know what? <laughs> They've done stuff like that before, though, haven't they? Didn't they say that um, men should be put on a sex ban if they don't, you know, if they do barbecues and stuff like that? And they, you know the thing that's, that they always look so ill, these representatives <laughs> from Peter. You know, you, you have these women come on this song putting my man on a sex ban. I think you'd be relieved. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, my mum, my mum, <laughs> really do. My mum saw a group of Peter people and she said, Ah, you know, they say they're normal men, but the wee dainty things are. Yeah. <laughs> wee dainty things. Yeah. I'd, I'd just like to say that this isn't Peter people like me. <laughs> this is no. for uh, people for the ethical treatment of animals. And uh, the, this is actually a resurfaced tweet from a few years ago that's right. been dug up because of how preposterous it is. And it's actually something to do with lactose. And apparently uh, white people are the only people that can... Uh, this, the lower rates of lactose intolerance or something like that. And apparently it's fed into this narrative of white supremacy and yeah, all the rest of it. It's biology. absolute categorical <laughs> nonsense. It's, but... it's absolutely not. My third wife is Rwandan. Your third and, wife? Yeah, yeah. Jesus Christ! <laughs> <laughs> you, oh, it's a good mistake. <laughs> We've been here an hour nearly. I mean, anything <laughs> can happen. I'm, I'm, Simon, I've just got to say something. Isn't it brilliant that Lois didn't read your bio? <laughs> 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 and, and as this show goes on, she's going to become more and more shocked. <laughs> but, sorry, well, continue. <laughs> so my third wife is Rwandan. Yes. R cows in Rwanda are massively important part of the yeah, culture are, yeah. and everything else. And worship is milk bars all over the place. So this idea that one particular ethnicity can drink milk and one car is just absolute... And it's yeah. white supremacy. It's just nonsense. Yeah. Yeah. I thought that question was for me. I was waiting for the <laughs> moment to play the white man. <laughs> <laughs> like, come on, Derek. Is milk, is milk, you know, a symbol of white supremacy? Well, I don't have the answer to that. Oh, we just said uh, it was a question yeah. for you. <laughs> but but I, sus I suspect, judging on my own experience, I don't drink milk. 
Why? Uh, well, because I, you have I, intolerance. I, I have oh, intolerance. Oh, right. Okay, that's interesting. But I was going to say, because they keep pushing this kind of alternative milks, don't they? And there was a survey, and I think it was really given at some kind of big conference, about how all these milks actually aren't good for you. Um, you know, like they're, they're really low in the kind of nutritional value of like normal cow's milk. I see that's the thing. I, I call it normal milk, and I got told off for calling it normal, normal milk. milk. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I loved how the former head of the FDA used to say that almonds don't lactate, so they should become <laughs> milk, like, oh, which I thought was Pete, hilarious. Pete, I had that. My, my brother's... What, you lactated out? No, but my, my, my brother's ex-girlfriend, he, was, he, um, he put out some coconut milk for the cats, and she went, my God, you can't do that. Cats are lactose intolerant. Well, the coconut doesn't lactate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think you're fundamentally misunderstood. But, but Andre and I were filming, and we were at a friend of mine's factory. And um, at the time, I was um, I was on I wasn't drinking. I was having a, some time off. I've I've come off the wagon. It was eight a.m. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I said, "Oh, I have a glass of milk." And both um, my my friend and Andre said, "What a glass yeah. of milk?" And I said, "But isn't that normal?" And Andre said, "Yes, if you're five. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. 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 Me though, Simon, about all of these sort of uh, vegan and vegetarian alternatives, they seem to be just pumped full of all sorts of junk. They are, yeah. and you know you've got you've got families who are trying to bring up kids healthy, and you've got sort of e this and what. Yeah. I mean, I think if there's any more than five ingredients on something, you should avoid it. And no easy milk. I'm surprised Peter's been told he can't say milk is normal. It's like milk. Certain milks have different pronouns yeah. now. I mean, he's getting rid of Semi skim skim. You've yeah. got to get it right. You get it wrong, you're, no, you're in trouble. It's funny, it's funny you bring this up because in this same report, which I presume this is where this question is from, the woman who wrote the the study has actually said that on the packaging of these alternative milks, it should come with a warning about the deficits in the nutritional value of these products. Yeah. But compared to how it's the other way around normally, where they're supposed to warn it what's in it. Uh, but when we talk about these alternative meat stuff and things, all these companies seem to be going bust though. From oh, what I can no gather, one's buying like it. no one's buying when it I, anymore. Do, do you know one of my friends for his fortieth birthday he decided to have a big dinner, and he wrote on the invitation. He said, uh, "If you have a genuine." Dietary requirement. <laughs> please, contact me. Said, please note, vegetarian and veganism is a lifestyle choice, not a dietary requirement. Yeah, yeah. And anyway, there are vegetables on the plate, just eat round the meat. Exactly, exactly. Now, on, would you be willing to do that in your college? You are somebody who's got a, a pretty good uh, track record academically. Um, you know, you're somebody who's pretty in the good, public... yeah. He chairs at Cambridge College. Yeah, yeah. yeah. pretty good. I mean, I, I, I've, been a bit, I've been a bit understated. But there is worries about universities, aren't there, when it comes to wokery mm -hmm. and about the fact that suddenly freedom of speech seems to be disappearing. Yeah. Suddenly uh, choice seems to be disappearing. And, and for me, and I don't know if I'm over the top about this, I just feel like, you know, right across the world, there are students who are fighting for the right to have free assembly, free discussion. And in Britain, we might have to change the law to force them to do it in Britain. Yeah. Well, look, the point about being at university is to have a university life, a university experience. Yeah. And we all know when we're young, we're idealistic and we're really rather stupid. And this applies, <laughs> and this applies to people even at Oxford and Cambridge. <laughs> Some people don't grow out of that, you realise. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so how is Jeremy Corbyn? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, isn't it, but isn't it true that basically uh, kids are being taught now to not to not use critical thinking, that to not look at both sides of the argument? The no. whole concept of being able to debate both sides of, of an argument has no, gone. we're not closing down critical thinking at Good. Oxford or at Cambridge. At I can assure you of that. Right. I'm also on the board of something called the Centre for Tutorial Teaching, which is all about... I've trying. heard about that. It's all about uh, 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 teaching people yeah. um, at all ages, yeah. um, in different careers and so on, about how to do critical thinking. Excellent. Properly. Fantastic. Now, I do want to say, just for your benefits, uh, Simon, I think many of the problems you had with the Labour Party was that uh, Jeremy Corbyn did a gap year that never ended. <laughs> <laughs> but anyhow, so... Uh, to, to Lois, to Lois, have animal rights campaigners demanded that cow's milk be defined as a white supremacist movement? Yeah, true. It's absolutely true! Yay! <laughs> Yeah, you never really know whether to clap no, or not. No, 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 no. So to Pete, <laughs> come on. Uh, Dominic Cummings is planning to create a whole new political party 
to challenge the Conservatives? Is it true or is it false? Well, I suppose this comes from one of his infamous, like, 10-page blog posts that he's that he keeps churning out every now and then. I have read this one because it got sent to me, but my point is on this. We keep looking at the last few general elections where most people tend to vote between the, either of the two parties anyway. And let's look at the, uh, the kind of number of parties that we've got now. What well, we've got, Reform, Reclaim, the Heritage yeah. Party, the UKIP, all on the yeah. right. And on the left, you've got the Greens, the Lib Dems, and obviously the Labour Party and all the all the little ones. We already have quite a few political parties. The, yeah. the problem I think we have isn't necessarily getting a new one. It's actually getting better politicians, you know, in my opinion. And I think that's what needs to change. Not new parties, new better people in Parliament. Do you know, do you know, do you know Pete, I always thought well, the most shocking detail about Dominic Cummings was, do you remember when um, him and his wife were falling ill with COVID and they went all the way to Castle Barnard in County Durham to find a babysitter? You think, how unpopular, <laughs> how unpopular do you have to be that you live in London and your nearest friend is in Durham? Right? But, like, the, like, no neighbour likes him. No yeah. family, none of the parents from school. It's literally, he has to go all the way well, to Durham. We're not having him here. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, I'm going to say, if you actually read what Dominic Cummings is actually proposing, here. He wants it basically to be a kind of like Liz Truss esque kind of oh, version no, of Thatcherism it kind of. Possibly. Yeah. And it, but interestingly, he wants it to have an expiry date, which I found very interesting. What, he wants milk? Like basically <laughs> to have it as a maximum to be what he thinks it can win in 2028, which is like, well, good luck with that. And yeah. um, he wants it to basically last for two terms and then that's it. He says that the problem with the political party system oh, is like these parties chug on for too long and they keep having to adapt to the things. And do you know what? He's not necessarily wrong in that regard that sometimes these parties are so big, so tired, so kind exactly of looking for new don't ideas. Don't underestimate actually the validity of the idea. Yes. Because I, I think yeah. that the trouble with the political system at the moment is sameness. It's yeah. rather like wokeness. Yeah. Everybody yeah. thinks and speaks in exactly mm. the same way. Yeah. Their policies are very much identical. Yep. Yeah. There is no difference really between Keir Starmer and um, what's the leader? Richardson. 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 <laughs> there you are. And Keir Light. Keir Light. Yeah. 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 They are coalescing around the middle, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. It's your point, Peter, that we need new politicians. I think they get captured. Once they end up yeah. in Westminster, in the bubble, many of them, conservatives, conservatives become Liberal when Democrats, you say captured, Labour. What do you mean? Uh, they, they become He's part right. of the sort of machine, you know. Yeah. Conservatives, instead of being conservative politicians, right, okay. start being more liberal but democrats. What's yeah. interesting, yeah. But what's interesting, hang, hang Simon? Simon, let me let me just ask you this, um, and I'm going to ask Derek in a minute, and, and basically the same question. So, look, you're somebody who's heavily associated with the Labour Party. You've been a Labour MP. I mean, Rochdale is one of the founding places of the Labour Party. The Cooperative Movement was founded there, and it just feels like people like you are not welcoming the Labour Party anymore. It's, the, it's just the, you know, metropolitan liberals who talk about issues that ordinary people just don't care about. Is it? Uh, um, yeah, exactly, isn't <laughs> yeah. it? And I've always been traditional right-wing Labour, tough on uh, illegal immigration, tough on benefit cheats, that sort of issue. Working uh, class. But tough working on people class. with beards. <laughs> 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 okay. Robin Cook's Tough on the causes of beards. It's the beard team, it's actually, beard yeah. Team. yeah. I always, I always, I, do you know, I always, I always give this example of uh, Lee East Labour Club, where my mum and dad used to go drinking. That's obviously Andy Burnham had that seat with the 24,000 majority. And what they have is, if it's your birthday that week, um, you get to buy everybody in the club on Saturday night a bit of food. And there are two <laughs> options. A nice present. <laughs> There's two options. There's a meat and potato pie or a meat and potato pasty. Yeah. <laughs> There's no vegan option. There's no vegetarian option. There's no pescatarian option. There's, no, gen brilliant. There's no gender neutral toilet. Yeah. <laughs> but, but that world to the Labour Party now is alien. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely alien. And that's all lost. And that's why I struggle with Keir. He's a nice guy, Keir Starmer. But we've gone from Ed Mill I, I got elected in 2010. And it went downhill from there. We had Ed Mill yeah, that's because you got elected. <laughs> yeah. The minute that dance shop got in there. He has literally no charisma. I was. Um, I was at the Parliament a few weeks ago, and I was in Portacliffe's house, and I was just waiting to be, you know, to be taken through. And and Keir Starmer came through. And I mean, Blair for all his faults, yeah. When he walked in the room, it was electric. I could feel Blair walking into the room before he actually came in. Keir, I didn't even know he was there. Well. He'd actually <laughs> left, and I hadn't even hardly noticed he was there. Yeah. You've either got it or you haven't. Yeah. You okay, Derek, yeah. Derek. So uh, you left the Conservatives for being racist. Is that true or false? I left what? The Conservative <laughs> Party. Who's uh, racist? Uh, 
I, Derek. I, I momentarily <laughs> left it because Theresa May was prime minister. That That's seemed to me to be a very That's credible a reason. reason. I choose the company of the ladies that I like extremely <laughs> carefully. Thank you very much. Well, <laughs> I'll take that. Well, I'll I'll take that. Well, well, so so what, what happened? Should we leave? <laughs> what, what, I'm in, what I'm interested in, it's a sort of rhetorical question, is why everybody always thinks that they can squeeze another party from the right. Yeah. From always from the right, never from the never from the left. That's yeah. Does this yeah. say, does this say something about our electoral college that we're well, dealing with? Well, it yeah. might it might say that we on the right are all lazy. awkward and can't <laughs> get on with each other. Yeah, yeah. that could yeah. be part no, of the yeah. problem. I, I, mean, that's, that's part I was, was going to say really quickly. I think that's I think that's the point. I think it's on the left. They, they all kind of broadly agree with each mm. other. I think it's mm. ego is on the right. I mean, like look at the state of reform, reclaim. If you could tell me the difference between any of these new parties, uh, good luck. But I mean, the reality is the only reason one set up, uh, they won't work together is because of all ego and stuff. And it is quite sad to see. It's also quite irritating if you do sit on the right of, po of pol uh, politics. I'm like, just get on and with actually, it. And actually, the sort of Brexit vote exposed that yeah. uh, very starkly because there was an official Brexit uh, uh, party, an unofficial one. Oh, yeah. yeah. And multi... You had Labour go, yeah. Labour yeah. leave. Yeah. You had yeah. all different uh, yeah. factions. Absolutely. Yeah. OK, well, has Dominic Cummings decided to set up something new? I mean, he doesn't have much staying power normally. I mean, of all, yeah. of all people, I wouldn't underestimate him, but on this, I, it's true. It's yeah. absolutely true! Yeah. That was The Woke That Was, continues after the break. Welcome back to That Was The Woke That Was. Uh, the BBC is under fire after a group of angry Ramonas hijacked last night at the proms with some EU flags. Uh, this is true, I think, and it's what's his name? St Steve Bray. Oh, Steve Bray guy. Yeah. Isn't Stop that? Brexit! Right. Oh, right. oh, oh God, God's sake. <laughs> Honestly, I'd have loved the opportunity. If he'd heckled me when I were in Parliament, I'd have loved the opportunity to throttle him, actually. <laughs> he is such a pain, isn't he? So it's true, they were there, and instead of waving. Union Jack flags, uh, they were waving EU flags. I, I, think, yeah. I don't know why we didn't just give Steve Bray an ASBO. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I think because what he was try, doing, right? and this is what upset me about it, what he was doing was uh, people, it was an important time for the United Kingdom, people were, wanted to see what their politicians were saying from College Green, and he would not allow that process to take place. Absolutely. Those camera crews came down yeah. and people wanted to know. I mean, they heard a bit too much from Anna Subri. But <laughs> you, you always feel like phoning the BBC and go, what do you think Anna Subri thinks? We haven't heard from her. <laughs> Where did you get a job? Why yeah. did Ray get a yeah. job? I mean, that's a simple <laughs> But uh, the one thing I will say, because I, I did watch the last night of the proms, because I, I do like the proms, and I was I just watched this little protest thing. It's like, if that's what you think is going to change people's minds, mm. I actually don't get angry about it. I just feel sorry for you. I mean, like, the referendum was 2016. Get over it. Yeah, but... You know, you're entitled to keep campaigning if you like. But if they think that this is how the protest movement is going to start, and this is how Britain's going back into the EU, I'm like, you're living in cloud but cookie Pete, land. You Pete, need to get over but it. Pete protest has metamorphosized into um, into abuse, into hijacking, yeah, to cause trouble. You know, it's not a protest to stand outside a butcher's for three weeks with a megaphone <laughs> saying it is his murder. Yeah. No, you, you are right there. And like we say, Steve Bray and his little merry, merry gang of idiots that all stand at the top of... Um, is it was top of Whitehall, isn't mm -hmm. it? Where they all and they all loud music blaring and stuff. But you know, you get tourists standing taking pictures and stuff. And I'm just looking at them like you've nothing better to do. But I wonder, and also, it's just not effective. It's not yeah, effective. But I anymore. wonder whether actually there is our response to this that's the issue, mm. not actually the well, protest you want to fix itself. Fix charge off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you old softy, Derek. <laughs> I'm such a love. <laughs> I didn't really like how Richard Tice from Reform came out and said that they should ban the EU flag from the event. I actually yeah. thought no, I thought that was a really bad bad move and a really bad thing to say because I actually thought it was a little bit more like reform looking for headlines and trying to get back right, on the news okay. a little bit. Yes. But I have to admit, if you believe in free speech, everything, you know, yeah, any but, flag but, you like. Yes, but, exactly. Yeah, but I'm gonna, no, I'm yeah. Gonna Ignore it. Ignore I'm gonna, it. I'm going I'm to defend Tice very quickly before we move on. And I'll tell you why. I'm actually because, paying you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because because the, pro the problem is with this, it is, it is a deliberate attempt 
uh, by a group of people who are rich enough to go to the last night of the problems yeah, to, very, to, very to get the union flag out the way and put the EU flag there. Yeah, I, I do agree with that. And, uh, and again, we have to ask about the role of the BBC in this because people keep forgetting well, it, will it. Be is almost, the BBC prompt. Sorry, sorry. It will be almost certainly negative. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but no, because everyone was saying like, oh, it's up to the Royal Hammer. It's like, it the BBC prompts that, you know, it is a taxpayer technically funded event. Yeah. So, you know, we do have to ask questions about that. But And we I have no choice. Well, I, I have to admit, I agree with Derek on this. It's just, we should just ignore these people. The more airtime and the more kind of focus we give to them, yeah. these more going to encourage them. Oh, oh no. hello, hello. hello. <laughs> it's the phone. Steve Brish. <laughs> hello. Yeah, <laughs> Sue, Sue, I think. Well, she said she was Labour, but she's just a bigoted woman. <laughs> that, was a, that was a disaster. That was a disaster. Yeah, it was, uh, it's Gordon Brown. <laughs> <laughs> now, come on, My come on. friend. You've got to tell us about the bigoted woman. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, God. Well, so I've been selected... You're joking. I'm... You're joking. <laughs> you said, what? You're joking. That's what she said. Yeah. And she's so... called Gillian Duffy. To yeah, yeah, Gillian yeah. Duffy. Yeah. I'm selected as a parliamentary candidate 2007, knocking on thousands and thousands of doors, uh, get weeks before the election, I get a phone call from the Labour Party head office. Gordon Brown, the Prime Minister, is going to come and help you win Rochdale. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you that, said. That, you know. No, I'm all right, Sam. Fantastic. Such right, good jokes, don't <laughs> they? <laughs> it turns up, uh, and they start, this old, older lady, Gillian Duffy, starts arguing with him. He handles it very well. He gets in his car to leave. Mm. I get in my car to go to another uh, event that I have to go to. Uh, he drives off. He's still got his microphone on. Yeah. Who put me with that bigoted woman? <laughs> and, 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 and Sue, I think it was Sue. <laughs> because she, uh, Gillian Duffy had said to him, um, what, where are all these Europeans flocking from? And I think he thought she said, where are all these Europeans effing coming from? Yeah. Oh, right. <laughs> but, uh, okay. but the obvious answer is they're coming from uh, Eastern Europe. Yeah, <laughs> I, mean, that's right. Right. Yeah, I, yeah. Thought, I thought that was terrible. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> It's Gillian Duffy! Oh, no. <laughs> she said, I don't believe it, you're joking. He said, what? He said, what? You're joking. You're joking. <laughs> she, thought, she thought he was joking. <laughs> um, it's amazing, though, isn't it? And I'll tell you what I thought was extraordinary about that was that she had gone away from that interaction thinking that Gordon had answered her questions. Yeah. She was very happy and yes. she was going to vote Labour. That's true. And it just shows the disconnect between the Labour Party and somebody like that. She was raising the issue of she immigration. She okay. Legitimately. Yeah, she, yeah. Yeah. she was very shocked. Yeah. You're joking. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, uh, have the BBC come under fire for a protest at last night's The Proms? Is it true or is it false? True. true. It's true. absolutely true! Yay! OK, the scores so far is the Woke Wabbit has been retired this week and <laughs> everyone's yeah. on three points. Yay. Yay. OK, to Derek. In response to the crumbling schools crisis, Education Secretary Gillian Keegan has proposed teaching children in the Bibby Stockholm. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Derek, please. I suspect it's untrue because I don't believe that Gillian Keegan's got an idea in her head. Oh, <laughs> oh. Uh, I think that's quite cruel, actually, because I rather like Gillian Keegan. Oh, it wasn't I, very good because speech. I actually think uh, if she hadn't, this is the point, if she hadn't have apologised, I think, you know, I think she could have come out of this rather well. I think this is the bit where the Tories got this, this entire crisis wrong. There was too much of what we call daylight between the event and somebody coming in front of a TV camera and explaining what had gone, what right. has happened okay. over the concrete thing. And then when Gillian Keegan went on, who has actually been working quite hard behind the scenes on this, after the interview went, oh, so you're not going to ask me any questions about whether what I've actually done. And she was caught in a hot mic situation. She was caught effing and blinding and all the rest of it. Yeah. But I actually think it showed it, one, to be a human being, and two, like, you know, we want politicians with personality. No, my if, and what annoyed really me, just, just one disgusting. second, what annoyed me the most was when somebody advised her to say sorry. These people who, who got on that moral high horse about her swearing and all the rest of it don't care about her apologising. If we had more politicians that actually had a sense of history, I read history, mm. so I'm always telling people yeah. that they should know their history because if you know your history, you can actually build a better future. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and if you go into politics because you want to be thanked... Yeah. That's very that true. seems to me to be the yeah, I, basic I think, I think fundamental point also, error. Also, can I just yeah, make the yeah. point I mean, that women that swear is disgusting? <laughs> <laughs> See, I, I, would, I was going to ask I mean, you about How do you think Winston Churchill felt <laughs> after 1945 when mm. he was dumped by the election? Yeah, yeah, that, yeah that's yeah, very true. But that, but, and, Gillian, but and Gillian thinks that she ought to be thanked. Well, I, I don't no, think it was Derek, necessarily... Hang, hang on a second. Let me just explore that, because obviously you, you did some advice for Margaret Thatcher, worked with her. Um, 
She was very thick skinned. I the thing that amazes me is somebody goes into Parliament, goes into politics, which is a tough sport, it is rough, and then they seem remarkably thin skinned and sort of <laughs> unable to take any criticism. Well, I don't know that that's necessarily true because I think the criticism is relentless. So, I mean, okay. to go back to Peter's point, if you're human, even slightly human, um, you're going to, at some stage, crack. And that's exactly yeah. what happened to her. So I, ex I excuse that. But I don't excuse anybody being stupid enough to think that you go into politics to be thanked, yeah, to be absolutely. appreciated and to be valued. You Who, don't. I, so I'll do my, my John Major impersonation. You work for John Major. Oh, no. He got Good. a lot of trouble. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. I like the fact. I had to live through all that. <laughs> I had to live through all that. <laughs> Not again. So did the country. <laughs> right, so, so Derek, Andre, do your, you can, you can okay, judge whether I'll it's a good impersonation because much. he does the best Thatcher okay. impersonation. Okay. Come on. We didn't send our British men to fight those Germans and the Italians that have been taken over by Belgium. <laughs> British security is through NATO. No, it's really rather more like. <laughs> 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 You've got the mad okay, the eyes. Yeah, the crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyhow, okay. Uh, so, in response to the schools uh, crisis, crumbling schools crisis, has the education secretary proposed to teach children on the Bibby Stockholm barge? No, it is absolutely <laughs> false. Yay! This is one of those where I just hope. Anyway, <laughs> I'll read it out. I'll read it out. Stick with it. Stick with it. <laughs> Kew Gardens has launched an LGBTQ event celebrating queer, uh, bisexual flowers and gay mushrooms. <laughs> is it, is it you are asking me. <laughs> well, uh, I'm that's... the only one that isn't gay. Lois. 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 All I can do is read it out, love. Okay. I, mean, I, love, okay. You know. I love gay mushrooms, actually. I much prefer them to Oh, by the way, I've just realised you've defamed a load of people. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so, yeah. so why, so, How is it defamation? So, so why don't why don't we just say why don't we just say no one's gay, no one's straight? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, we are all individuals. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. We're gay. It just but depends on the day. But don't, yeah. don't, listen, listen. I'm a non-binary oh, no, Rastafarian. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> okay, go on. Um, yeah. Do you know what? This sounds so. <laughs> Absolutely ludicrous that it probably is true, but uh, it, it's quite interesting. Where is that? The um, Kew Gardens. Oh no, Kew right. Gardens. My my dad did this stunt actually about um, about twenty years ago where he put um, a marijuana plant in the Chelsea Flower Show. <laughs> and uh, to, he was doing a story with the News of the World, I think. And and they actually ran it on Have I Got News For You. That's so, so yeah. Funny. So he planted a cannabis plant in order to get it into a national newspaper. <laughs> and, he was working with them. And, 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 blame, <laughs> and, and then blame the organisers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so, so your dad is, you know, Mr. Mr. Decency, isn't he? Clearly. Um, I, don't, I don't even have anything to do with him now. But, uh, <laughs> but no, yeah. I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Let's keep it light, love. Yeah, it's okay. Saturday night. But anyway, <laughs> yeah, well, there you go. So that, that, that Just happened. for the record, and contrary to what Lois said, I am not gay. I just want to say that I'm not gay. I have to say, if if the number of relationships you had was to disguise your homosexuality, <laughs> you've done well. You've done well. You've done really well. I, it would be a massive thing for me, wouldn't it, if I was actually disguising the fact that I am indeed a lesbian. It would be the biggest cover-up ever. Let me tell you something, Lois. <laughs> Having drunk with you till 6 a.m., I know you are not yeah. a lesbian. <laughs> right. Anyway, anyway we, don't, we don't want to get into this whole fight. Oh, right. No, 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 let's not do let's that. Let's not bring it back to the question. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, right, can I tell you, can right. I ask you this? Go on. At Q, are there such thing as gay mushrooms? Yes. Come on, yes or no? Yes. It's absolutely true! Yay! <laughs> That was The Woke That Was, continues after the break. Welcome back to That Was The Woke That Was. According to the Daily Mail, Sadiq Khan is issuing demands for more than £700,000 a day in ULES fines. Is it oh, true well, this or is, is it false? This is absolutely extortionate. I mean, it's, it is genuinely blood-boilingly infuriating. It's literal I mean, extortion. Yeah, it, yeah. it, it is it's crazy. I mean, I was reading the other day that I think in, in the last economic quarter, the, the over these kind of ULES fines throughout London now, they, they've made about £65 million out of it. This is nothing but a money-making scheme. And for anybody to sit there and say this is about 
air quality and oh, you, uh, yeah. net zero. I'm sorry, it, you're lying to people. I mean, the head of the TFL, I can't remember what I think it's Christine Calderto or something like that, basically said, oh, it's not a money maker scheme. It's not a money maker scheme. I'd love to know how much money she's on because I tell you right now, she's stealing a living. It is absolutely disgusting. There was a story actually here at Talk TV throughout the week about how there was a cancer patient who had been charged £12.50 just to get to the hospital That's for their treatment. I've got, it's disgusting. I've got, I've got a theory on this. I've got a theory on this, Simon, about the mistake that has been made in London. And it's this. When they integrated Transport for London together, everyone said, this is great, uh, all the transport is now integrated together. However, what it actually meant was the tube now runs its competitors. And one of its competitors oh, yeah. are the roads, right? right? Uh, so why on earth would you pay to subsidise road building when you're comp when you own the competitor, yeah, the yeah, tube? Yeah, so I think it's deliberate that they're screwing it up. And the only way to solve it in these big cities is to break up these yeah, institutions. But, but so you, what you're saying, the, the answer is true. I, yeah. I, I am shocked at that. It is a money making exercise. I don't think the public are going to put up with it. No. No, I think it's not. going to come to some sort of head. Well, and in terms of TFL, I mean, the tube, I use a tube, it's going to rack and ruin it. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Simon, 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 and you're also the price you're, is going up. Yeah. Yeah. Simon, you're, you're, you're a Labour guy. What is Sadiq Khan thinking? Because it's a punishment of the poor. Yeah, exactly. But it's about money. It's about revenues, isn't it? Uh, and, and it'll be interesting if Corbyn stands against him in the yeah. mayoral election. He wow. certainly won't get elected. He's only just ahead of the Conservative at the moment. Well, it's it's opinion it's it's like, has Sadiq Khan raised 700 grand a day on New Lays? It's true. It's absolutely true! <laughs> The BBC disinformation correspondent and chief fact checker uh, Mariana Spring has been accused of lying on her CV, Simon. I think this is true. Yeah, I think she's. Uh, I think that's correct. Uh, I don't know what the line's about. I haven't read the story in detail, but I'm pretty sure it's true. But what, she's but she's part of the disinformation, if you know. That's what I <laughs> yeah, always find peculiar. The, she's the BBC's chief fact checker, and basically what she did was on her CV. This is so she's kind of exaggerated her CV basically, and uh, she said that she worked with this journalist in Moscow, and this journalist for the BBC said no, she didn't, well, I which find... I found quite interesting. How a journalist yeah, yeah, yeah. turned on another one, which what you I, don't wow. see very what often. I, what I find what I find extraordinary about these fact checkers. And, and I agree with Donald Trump, by the way, that they're the most dishonest people of them all. Absolutely. The reason is because they will never, <laughs> they will never declare their political bent. No. What they always say is they always say we're completely neutral, which they rarely are. And actually, what they do is continually, when ordinary people try and debate on Twitter, just find some overblown explanation yeah. as to why their theory is wrong. And actually, I think first of all, they're not encouraging debate; they're against no, it. No. Number two, they lie on their seat. Well, they, they lie about their background by saying they're neutral. And the other th and the third thing finally is that they they often act for politically motivated organizations just, like the BBC can I just make the point that even the fact that we've got in a and you know in a normal colloquial language that the phrase fact checkers and disinformation it is quite strange. I mean, 10 years ago, it wasn't in, in our yeah. normal discourse, was it? It's so Orwellian. Yeah, and now it's normal to I say think... fact checker, disinformation, so and all of that. To yeah. Take that and how dare they? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Well, one thing I, I do think it raises, though, is that kind of who guards the guards kind of situation. Mm. You know, yeah. like we're supposed to rely on journalists for much of we can do to actually question our people in power to actually hold them to account it's one of the it's one of the main roles one of the most important roles that we have for the media and yet if we can't trust them to do the most basic things like this how can we trust them on anything else you want to know why the mainstream media is collapsing it's because of situations like this it's people are switching off because there's too many instances of them not holding each other to account which i think is a huge problem and they they're, they're not being honest with the general once, once, once again once again pete I think, I think, you know, you're on a warning now as well. <laughs> and, 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 and I'll tell you why. This show is not in favour of journalists uh, calling other journalists to account. We are not in favour of that. Yes, I know. I've told him. I've told him. Right? We, yeah, no, we won't expose it. Just don't, just don't admit what we got up to yesterday. <laughs> OK, that's fine. Thank you. <laughs> I love The Guardian. Uh, okay. <laughs> the point I wanted to make was I want to know who the fact checker was, uh, checker was, that was checking uh, Bashir. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. 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 Very good. Right. That's yeah. a really good point. Well, why don't just make good TV? Don't have a set up a giant unit for checking so called facts. Just do good TV and people yeah. might watch it. I and mean, listen. No, okay. I'm going to say so, is it, so Simon. Um, has the only the BBC yeah. has the BBC got a disinformation correspondent who's been accused of lying on her CV? Yes, this is true. It's absolutely true. Yeah, I've heard that. Yeah, yeah. So, 
So now on to the scores. And unfortunately, things have majorly changed now. Uh, Lois is on minus 25. <laughs> Pete Why? is on minus 50. Oh. And Simon and Derek are both on 500. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Congratulations to everyone. OK, so over to Derek. And look, this is this is a benevolent dictatorship. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And therefore, and therefore I just without, decided the scores. But without the benevolent. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah. That's right. Absolutely. OK, uh, Conservative MP Jonathan Cullis has said low-achieving pupils should be banned from taking out student loans. Is it true or is it false? And do you agree with it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, he loves it. Oh. He loves it. <laughs> this is one definitely for me. Yes. Uh, not just because I chair Cambridge College, but actually because I'm interested in higher education. And I want more and more people to go to university. It's a great experience. Who should be there. But <laughs> I think that everything should be on merit. Yes. And uh, the 50% target introduced by the uh, Labour government um, under uh, Tony Blair and um, Gordon Brown has actually created massive problems in the higher education space right. uh, 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 on different levels. But um, I do think, however, that um, Jonathan... <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Interrupted by a telephone. I know. Well, he was quick on the other questions. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, no, I know. I'll, I'll just just check if he's been wound up. <laughs> <laughs> but but De 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 Derek, 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 may I, Derek, I'm sorry. <laughs> It was just, it was just, it was, it was just a bit slow. You know? we, just, we, just, we just need to pick up the pace. I can do repeat. Derek, 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 may I put an allegation to you, which, which a friend of mine talked about. He works for a, a major law firm, and he said that now uh, there are all these rules about getting into top universities. Um, but actually, he said quite often it's based on postcode. They put certain number of people in from one area, certain from an area, and he said. A lot of these state school kids that are now going to top universities actually haven't been better educated than they were before. They're just being positively discriminated. He said, nobody at my law firm's stupid, but some of them are badly educated. Right. Come on, Derek. Come on, Derek. Derek. Well, they're a bit quicker this time. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there are plenty of badly educated people. I mean, they're all over the place, yes. whether they go to Cambridge or whether they go to Oxford or whether they go to Leeds or, 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 or anyway. But, but um, the, the idea that people are being selected by their postcode. I mean, it's not entirely true. What happens is that uh, you have to keep, uh, for, for UCAS, um, a, a count of where you're getting your students from. Right. So, you know, is so, that, so, 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 so one of the things that they do is actually to count the, or, 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 or to register the postal address uh, that they're taking um, their students from. But this is peculiar because we have 142,000 uh, Chinese students. Uh, yeah. Presumably they're using a Beijing postcode in, yeah, yeah. in, in yeah. this or something. It doesn't, well, one of them... it doesn't the, the count doesn't apply to international students. I was going to say, ah. I keep but, trying but why? We're taking so many, surely. Yeah. They know. pay the, the top dollar. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <I> know, <laughs> and plus, we plus, plus, we need Chinese in the UK because we're running out of House of Commons researchers. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, it's topical. I know, it's topical. <laughs> well, no, so th this this report comes from a new group that's called the New Conservatives, and they launched. I think it was their launch week actually this week. Mm. And there's actually quite. I think the former Skills Minister is involved in this, and you know, I think he chairs the APP. G on skills as well. Apologies, I can't remember his name. But um, I think it's going along the lines that if you look at the uh, result, uh, the, the numbers from last year, you had 48% of people registered an interest in apprenticeships and a third of students actually did vocational degrees. So basically those ones mm. that lead you into a, a career. And it's about the kind of shifts in what do we think the purpose of education is? Is it to get a job or is it for the sake of learning, is it? Yeah. And I think this is—I think this is the one thing that the target of fifty percent really did ruin. Was there are some people that just like learning things, and I yeah. think we kind of we kind of turned a degree into a kind of like an asset to kind of like cash in on. And I, I think that's one of the problems that the higher education has had for oh, quite yeah. some time. Okay, right, but. Uh, is it uh, true or false that Jonathan Cullis has said that low achieving students should not be, have access to student loans? It's a daft idea and it's true. Yay! It's absolutely true! <laughs> Sadiq Khan, has praised, <laughs> Sadiq Khan has praised migrants arriving via dinghies across the channel, hailing them for being shining examples of low-carbon, high-density commuting. <laughs> is it true or is it false? <laughs>
Oh my God, no, that's got to be false, hasn't it? It's hilarious, but it's got to be false. But the thing is, with Rishi Sunak, he just flip flops all over the place. I, is he going to stop the dinghies? No. I don't think anyone could stop the dinghies because there's no will for it. I yeah, think I'll tell you, why didn't it happen until a few years ago? No, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you what I think we should do, right? right? We should phone up the Russian embassy now and say, don't bother getting a new aircraft carrier. Yeah. Don't bother with your, yeah. your nuclear power submarines. Don't bother with any of that. If you want to penetrate the Royal Navy's sea defence... Penetrate just the Royal get, Navy? Just get a few dinghies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we can't stop the dinghies. Well, I mean, if you, how are you going to stop a no, warship? No, I know, it's true, yeah. OK, Absolutely. but, okay. Lois, is it... True or is it false that Sadiq Khan described uh, people coming on dinghies as low carbon, high density commuting? Even he's not that ridiculous. It's got to be false. <laughs> it's absolutely false. Yeah. <laughs> Please, God, no. <laughs> Please, no. Tampons are being provided in the General Medical Council's male toilets what? in order to be more inclusive, Pete. I hate this show so much. I, <laughs> I genuinely, I come in in such a good mood and then you give me a question like that and I leave miserable. But no, honestly, this wouldn't surprise me if it's true. You know, this is all about this kind of diversity and inclusion nonsense that we keep being peddled at. So, what I find more concerning is that this stuff is in the medical profession. You know, I the, know. We're relying on these people to... Is it true? To, I, 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 I genuinely, actually, on this one, I don't, I don't know. know. Simon, yeah. Simon, we've seen a lot of waste in government on these sorts of things. And I just feel like... Uh, you know, in, in somewhere like Rochdale, there's going to be people who really need these public services, who really need their local hospital and GP to be good, and then money's being splurged on this rubbish. That need yeah. the um, that need them, and they've been wasted. Being and, and, and people in, in the red wall seats, as they call them, just don't understand this whole no. walk agenda. They mm. are completely oblivious. They just don't get it. They think it's hilarious. They just but they do might not... be there, of course, because they are now uh, gender neutral. Point. Yeah, <laughs> I well, mean, they, they will well, see some of this stuff yeah. and experience some of it, but they think it's just a complete. And then, and then there's complaints that there isn't enough money so, around. Yeah, How incredible. Yeah, Simon, I, I just want, as you're here, I just really want to ask you this question because I think it's so important. Um, would you, has the Labour Party been hijacked? I mean, is that the problem? Yeah, because yes. people in Northern England feel that way. Absolutely, yeah. From 20, uh, 10, 2010 onwards, uh, particularly, Ed Miliband, who, who created the way... He, he was absolutely hopeless, created the way for Corbyn <laughs> to come forward, uh, so it went from bad to even worse. And now we've slightly come out of that with Keir Starmer, but he's very much in Ed Miliband's mould. Mm. Uh, so it's still been Brexiteer, captured, really, by the uh, North London... Uh, Labour elite, mm. and that's why I struggle with. Yeah, I mean, I mean, this is this is the sad bit about it because whatever you think about the Labour Party in terms of whether you'd vote for them, yeah, clearly they have been a force for good in Britain. In clearly they have been extremely important, and to see them sort of die, I mean, I think, I mean, I, I can't talk about Rochdale, I don't know it, but but for Lee to vote Conservative. I mean, it's yeah. unbelievable yeah. for them to get sick of them. Yeah, it tells you all you need to know, doesn't it? Uh, I think they'll make some gains back at the next general election, but I, I still think they, 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 they will struggle. Struggle. They'll either not get a very big majority or they could even uh, not Please. do it. Derek, I, Derek, can I ask you, has the Conservative Party been hijacked by technocrats? Oh, I think... Like the, this. <laughs> well... The Conservative Party hasn't been the Conservative Party for a very long time. Yeah, I uh, so I think that it's been hijacked at an earlier moment of time. Mm. Uh, we've got subversives uh, that have become um, leaders of the Conservative Party in one way or another. So Liz, Liz Truss was a very good example of that, I think. Uh, Boris Johnson, um, another example of that. Um, and um, I, I would definitely say that the Conservative Party, rather like politics generally speaking now, is um, the home for technocrats. I've got... I'll, I'll give you my theory. Oh, oh I'm, hello, Prime Minister. <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, yes. Well, I'm not going to say that to him. I mean, he uh, <laughs> seems like quite a reasonable bloke. The knighthood. <laughs> the knighthood. The knighthood. <laughs> <laughs> I want to hold no, your he's, breath. He's, he's basically <laughs> said, I'm willing to give Derek a peerage. After all, we've given everyone else one. <laughs> <laughs> but, but Derek, I've but got... But he's already a lord. He's but, Derek lord. But, but <laughs> Derek, Derek, I've got a theory about the Conservative Party, and it's this. Um, when Nigel Farage and UKIP walked out of the Conservative Party, because many of them were at least Conservative voters before, that was great, and it forced a referendum, and we left the European Union. But the, net, but the effect of it was also that the Liberal Democrats were the only people left within the Conservative That's Party right. and the entire right had left. And so, consequently, you had a far more left-wing Conservative Party, but you did get Brexit. So it was, it was a double-edged sword. 
Well, but historically, actually, the Conservative Party's always been centre-left more than centre-right. Mm. I mean, it's only post-1979 that you would actually describe the Conservative Party as centre-right, which is what all the trouble was about, really. Yes. Yeah. You know, so people like Heath, you know, people like Gilmore, people like Soames, you know, they felt deeply uncomfortable in this new party they used to so, call it. So, so uh, before we ask the question, my mother told me a joke from the 1970s. Oh, about God. Me. <laughs> no, it's about Ted Heath. Why does Ted Heath like to wear his underpants in the bath? Because he doesn't like to look down on the unemployed. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Very it's a joke about him being a lefty as well. I like okay. that. I like that. <laughs> Yes, Bobby Davro does write for the show. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want me to tell you? Goodbye. <laughs> OK, let's get the answer. OK, so tampons in the General Medical Council oh, toilets. I mean, oh. these, this group is so ridiculous. I'm going to say it's true. It's absolutely and unfortunately true! Oh, okay. <laughs> and the winner is Derek with oh. 8,000 oh. points. Hey, Derek! Yay! Yay! Well done. <laughs> Uh, so the six foot cut out of Gordon Brown is winging its way to the Cotswolds to be promptly destroyed when it gets to Derek's house. <laughs> Until next week, goodbye. Yay! Yay!